Welcome everybody to Downtown Variety. Woo! Oh my God, it will be a miracle if I get through this because we've been having some crazy issues today with our software. But hell, we're here. Okay, so I am Maddie Barber Bockelman hosting Downtown Variety, La Mama and Culture Hub's new online performance series coming at you live from all sorts of areas, mainly in New York City tonight, but we're going bigger soon. Um, this is a, an experiment. This is an experiment in survival uh, to see how artists and how we can come together in this time. And it's an experiment for us because we have this piece of software we're using, Live Lab, and we're really pushing it right now. Um, but that's what we do. So we're going to give it a try. Tonight we have an incredible lineup of artists. It's unreal that La Mama has and Culture Hub has, you know, these friends in our circle and we're so grateful that everyone's down to give this a try. So I'm pumped. Um, all right, without further ado. Oh, thank you, Rena Anakwe. That first performance was Rena Anakwe. Yeah. I should probably, okay. Okay, next up, we have Susanna Cook, live from her basement. Here she is, Susanna Cook. Thank you. 
that heart rate up, huh? <laughs> yes. What the heck? You've been performing in the downtown scene for like over 20 years or probably much more than that. I'm a baby right now. And uh, what, what is it like to perform in your basement <laughs> under these conditions? You know what? It's great too. It's great that we are staying connected. It's great that we are surviving and I was trying to, I was thinking a lot like what to do for this because besides that we are all kind of sad and afraid uh, and super busy. My, I'm still working because I'm a dog walker and I, you know, I am an essential worker, I'm glad. But um, I was like, I can't do anything. There's no words. I'm mostly a writer, but there's no words now. It was really difficult. And I was like, well, the only thing that is I have in my head and everybody has these days is numbers, numbers, numbers. Mm -hmm. We are constantly counting. Um, and then, you know, like I asked Julian, Julian is the one who did the music. And actually, uh, well, I tell the story of the numbers, but um, I thought that that was the dramatic part, the numbers, and then the the fear, the shaking, the, the rush that we get in our head. And then comes the music that was like the happiness, right? Like when this is over or when the moments of happiness that we can rescue now, like I wanted to end with something like a dance, like happiness. So this morning I was in the dog run listening to the music. I please don't. And then I in the happy part. Please. Okay. So sorry, I have a, a roommate. Uh so in the happy part, I started to cry. It was the part that was making me more sad to connect with that happiness. So not that connecting with happiness is sad, but I I thought that, I don't know, for some reason that made me miss that kind of happiness. Um, but I don't know, I realized from Facebook and the places where people put messages that we went from a place of anger at the government, at the the, the mishandling of this whole situation to a place of, of like I see most of the postings that I see now are very spiritual. They're very about supporting each other, about faith, about trying to to rescue you know something good. And I th and then that's when you guys contacted me, and I was like, that's great. I have to do something, even though I couldn't really come up with anything, and. And I think that it's one of, it's part of the transformation. You know, this is also giving access to people that can never go to the theater. You know, yeah. we were lucky that we were there and we're going to be back there and some people can't. So I thought, well, there's something great to rescue from this. That is, you know, that we are also creating a tool that will give access to theater and performance to a lot of people who normally don't. So, I don't know, I'm trying to stay positive. It's pretty scary, but we're gonna go through this. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's the magic of the mind. You can actually, yeah, you can just try, just try to feel better. Yeah, and like uh, somebody said, I think it was a therapist who said in some article, whatever, I can't remember really, I would like to give her credit, but she said to be dis distancing doesn't mean disconnected. Mm -hmm. We have to keep distance, physical distance from each other. We have to stay home, but we can connect. And I think that this is a big step to say, well, we're going to do it this way. And we're going to remember this. And we're going to remember the good things about this kind of connection because we are connected. And it makes me so happy to be chatting with you right now. And there's some friends watching, you know? Yeah. So and the last time we were hanging out was in the club at La Mama. Yeah. Doing the, what was it called? The ghosts? The non special relationships with ghosts. Yes. I was going to do ghosts today. I thought about doing some ghosts, but then I thought um, these are real bodies, real people. Like I wanted to have like an, an, an image of a lot of people walking, but we are too. Uh, yeah. So we had like a lot of walking around, but you know, uh, I don't know. It's it's I, I think it's it's good that we are trying and we are we're gonna go through this together and we can we can continue creating performances. Invite yeah. me time. I want to I want to do this. I think that we have to continue doing this. Yeah. Hell yeah. Cool, Susanna. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank Yay. you. Thank you, everybody. And I will see you soon here or in the theater. Beautiful. Bye, hon. Next up, we've got video art by Cameron Neal, who is a resident artist at Culture Hub currently. Um, and you'll we'll let the work speak for itself. Just one. To Chris, to Chris. Hello. Um, so I uh, spent the past year working with um, young people of color for this songwriting project that I do called Co Written. And uh, um, 
So a lot of these kids are in uh, places that are not traditional school settings. And one of the places I went to was um, a psych ward. And so these kids have been in isolation for a long time, excuse me. <laughs> and uh, this is like nothing new for them. But I went with them and I, I um, worked with them to craft some lyrics and they came up with some really good stuff. And then I got my friend Rotem Sivan to do some music for it. <clears throat> and my really amazing singer friend Jasmine Yvonne to do vocals. So this is like my take on it. Uh, it's called Night Sky. This is for them because they can't actually get their voices out into the world like we are. So this is from them, I would say. <clears throat> this is also a tape, piece of tape. And this is um, a hand that can wave at you while I'm singing. If I see you in the night sky, oh, I'll spread my wings and fly to you. Will you look me in the eye and hold me close as you can? Will you take me to Neverland? Please, please. Fairy tale dreams always contain your beauty and your I feel so undeserving. Fairy tale dreams always contain you. I'll know your face from among the rest. Your constellation will always be the best. Run across stars moons and galaxies no one's gonna care for you like i do fairy tale dreams always contain your beauty and your grace i feel so undeserving fairy tale dreams always contain you if i had you in my arms if i had you in my arms my dreams would come true oh, if i had you in my arms if I had you in my arms, my dreams would come true. Oh, if I had you in my arms, if I had you in my arms, my dreams would come true. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you, Chris Ignacio. Chris Ignacio, who is a steadfast La Mama family member who's keeping it rolling yeah, now. Right Beautiful. All right, let's shake things up with a little movement from Kimberly 
Savarino, who I recently had the privilege of performing with in the Trojan Women. Kim.
Hi. I'd like to read a little journal excerpt from 1997. New York, March 7th, 1997. It's been nearly 20 years since I moved into the East Village in 1979. I sit here on a Friday night at restaurant La Strada on East 4th Street. It is crowded and noisy, smoky and very young. I don't recognize the faces. My neighborhood is not what I've known for the past 20 years. Not where I feel comfortable. The Anderson Theater down the street on 2nd Avenue next to the bar is being demolished, stripped of its soul, clipped of its wings, its ghosts evicted. As part of the fabled and historic Yiddish Broadway theaters that dotted Second Avenue, the actress Molly Picon must be turning in her dear grave. Sure, this theater had been empty and unused for years, but remains for me a shrine, the scene of inspiration 25 years ago for 1979, where I saw the San Francisco-based gender performance art troupe, The Coquettes, which changed my life and set me on this rocky road, bruised and glittered. To the stripping down of the walls, exposing the proscenium, empty seats, the giant crystal shadow there long ago fallen into the orchestra seats, the vacant stage raked and splintered, a repository of the ghosts of effort, of love, of sweat and care. Lost rituals would still reverberate. I stand in the street and watch the wrecking ball swing its violent metronome, the final ignorant soloist in this concert of madness called progress. I wish I had a camera or a brick. But why should I grieve? No longer pretend to be young. I can savor some accumulation of wisdom and gratitude for having survived famine, surmounted self-imposed hurdles and unearthed ways to coexist with plague and find myself in the role of survivor and observer. Time to move on from 184 East 3rd Street to make room for new dreamers who absorb and collect what they will and have the need to wring it out in displays of courage and commitment at surprising intervals. And now, little song by Donovan called Try for the Sun. We huddled in a derelict building, the gypsy boy and I. We slept on the breeze after midnight With the raindrops and tears in our eyes And who's going to be the one To say it wasn't good what we done I dare a man to say I'm too young For I'm gonna try for the sun we huddled in a derelict building And when he thought I was asleep He laid his paw coat around my shoulder And shivered there beside me in a heap And who's going to be the one To say it was no good what we done I dare a man to say I'm too young Or I'm gonna try for the sun We sang and cracked the sky with laughter Our breath turned to mist in the cold Our years put together counted thirty but our eyes told the dawn that we were old And who's going to be the one To say it was no good what we done I dare man to say I'm too young For I'm going to try for the sun Mirror, mirror hanging in the sky but you look down where 
what's happening here below. I stand here singing to the flowers, so very few people really know. And who's going to be the one to say it was no good what we done? I dare a man to say I'm too young, or I'm gonna try for the sun. We heard a little bit of the gypsy boy and I. We slept in the rain after midnight, with the rain dropping tears in our eyes. And who's going to be the one to say it was no good what we done? I dare a man to say I'm too young, or I'm gonna try for the sun. Thank you, John Kelly. Ah, uh, to be graced with the presence of John Kelly. And for all of us to get a, what feels to me like a private concert in my bedroom from John Kelly and a private diary reading. A little bit, a little bit romantic. So John. Hi. Hi. What is, what is this like for you? What is this moment like for you? There you are. There I am. There you are. So many boxes. I know. Rectangles, videos. Yeah. So those journal entries are are so incredible. And um, yeah, it's it's interesting to read them today and what's going on in the world and i what's it like for you what are you what are you thinking what's it like to be going out in the day <laughs> well i go out twice a week oh to, uh, yeah to buy groceries and take a walk i have you know i have asthma so i'm being super careful yeah but you know, I did a piece at La Mama a couple of years ago, which utilized my journal entries, and it's kind of in the back of my mind to go back into them, and, uh, you know, there'll eventually be a book. But just thinking of La Mama, of the East Village, of my previous history, of the current plague versus the other plague, which is still a pandemic, AIDS, there's a lot of stuff swirling around in my psyche. And I think collectively we're recalibrating and we're having to uh, maybe consider what's important. And what I'm really loving is friends and loved ones reaching out. That's been the best thing so far. Yeah, all, all my friends are having like, oh, I'm going to have a video chat with my family at night, or I'm going to reconnect with my friends from elementary school. And mm -hmm. it's so interesting that that's the impulse that when we do, I don't know, it's, it, there is a, a good part of it. Yeah, social distancing isn't emotional distancing. Yeah. You know, it's really physical distancing, and we could still be socially and emotionally connected. Thankfully, with the I hope the grid doesn't go down. That would be kind of disastrous. Oof, I know, I know. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's really unique to be going through this this pandemic with the internet. Yeah. And I sort of wonder, like, what do you how does it how how different does it feel that the fact that we have the internet and we have um video and media that can be so readily shared versus back during the aids crisis when you know there was phone communication and some internet right but what how what is that difference like well the, <laughs> the world wasn't on our side uh, it took a while to get the world on our side or to help to help us and there was, you know, there were rallies, there were meetings, uh, there was wheat pasting, um, and the community and the tribe prevailed. Um, but it was entirely different, absolutely. There was the street life was different. We were walking around, running into each other more frequently. It was that. 
It was an analog life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there are so many ways that it was different, so many ways, but. Yeah, but it's funny because there are so many knee-jerk words, like uh, I wrote some down, like asymptomatic, testing positive, pandemic, generation, you know, uh, uncharted waters. It's like uh, there are so many knee-jerk words from, from the AIDS pandemic, which is still, you know, happening, that uh, I find myself um, being alarmed in a very profound manner, the core of my being. At the same time, I have some tools that, for, with which to deal with this. So I'm okay. I'm a long-term yeah. survivor. It's thir more than 30 years for me, and I'm entirely healthy and thriving. So um, whatever scars there may be are, are functional scars. Here, here. <laughs> Thank you, John. I'm so grateful Thank to you. have you on Downtown Variety. It's an honor, to say the least, to have an icon of the downtown performance scene here in Live Lab. Um, so we're so grateful, so thankful. Um, and yes, they say I, I too have asthma. If you uh, end up needing an, uh, an inhaler delivery, just please let me know. I just stock up. <laughs> All right, and that goes for anybody watching too. If you need an inhaler and you don't have one, holler at me. Um, all right, John. Thank you. Bye -bye. See you soon. Thank you. Okay. And next up, we have Object Collection. Cheers to the wish you were here. Cheers to the wish you were here. Cheers to the wish you were here. Cheers to the wish you were Oh, 
with my bean and um, it's very nice to be here uh, with with my piano so great you guys want to hear a joke about corona ah, it's okay you probably won't get it <laughs> sorry it's inappropriate strange times strange times a lot of time to reflect and to look inside or to just watch Netflix like what I've been doing. I watched the movie um, Lion King and there's this part where Simba uh, you know, he, he runs to the jungle. He escapes because uh, his father, Mufasa, just like, you know, like, um, he fell really, really hard. So what can you do other than to run to the jungle after your father falls really, really hard? Um, yeah, that's what I would do. So then <laughs> he goes to the jungle and, you know, time passes and he eats food and he makes new friends and he sings songs and suddenly out of the blue his childhood friend Nala Nala you remember Nala don't you of course you do she runs into him in the jungle crazy Nala so crazy and in the beginning Simba is like Go away. Hakuna Matata. <laughs> but then what happens is they hang up in the they hang out in the jungle a little more. And they roll down the hill. And they get a little wet in the water. Elton John is playing sexy music in the background. And before you know it, Nala is posing on the grass with her bedroom eyes. And Simba looks at her and she's like, go for it. Go for it, she says. And how can you not? So at that moment, it was at that moment that Simba found for the first time Nala attractive. Great. Now, this moment was a little bit confusing for me um, because On my one hand, I was also attracted to Nala. <laughs> but on the other, I don't know, it felt really wrong to be attracted to a lion. Suddenly she was lying on the grass, looking like Beyonce with eyeliners, and Elton John was playing music in the background. I felt like my entire sexuality was put to a test. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't ready for this. I was only 10 years old. My, my parents were sitting next to me. Not cool Disney. It's not, it's not cool. What, 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 what do you expect me to feel? You know, I'm a human being. She's a lioness appearing to my senses as hot. What did you do to me, Walter? <laughs> it's, 
not cool. Let's sing together now. I think that was my first direction. Great. That was my little self-quarantine story. Because now I had to watch this movie again. And I hope that you're having a much better, better time than what I had to go through. I really hope that. Thank you very much. What 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 is happening now? <laughs> do I do I do I continue? Do I stay here? Oh, Daniel, Corin, everybody. Now? No, I, do, am I supposed to, do I supposed to hear moment. anything? Uh, because I don't hear anything. <laughs> oh no, am I ruining Terry? Am I ruining wow. it? Yeah, no, it's pretty what, sexy. But... Good to know. Good to know we have that in common, you and I. Um, hey, now wow, I get it. We've been yeah, yeah. through this because night. Listen, That's kind because of, it's uh, because you're appearing Daniel's twice. Still, uh, he's definitely... You're appearing twice, so I was like working on your uh, hologram, I guess, not the real you. Wait, are you talking to me? Now I'm talking to you, yeah. Now I'm oh talking to God, you. Oh my God, I had you muted. I just like realized that I need to unmute something because that's what I've mm -hmm. been doing in the rehearsals. So yeah. I'm smart, I you know, whatever. Oof, there's so oh. much smarter in this room. I just need to... Yeah, thank you so much. I just wanted to show off my uh, arms, I guess. Yeah. I know yeah. you have to talk a little bit because uh, I'm I'm starting to talk nonsense. Not that so far it wasn't nonsense, but please tell me something. Are you enjoying your snacks? Yeah, I just brought out the popcorn for uh, this uh, for this performance because I thought uh, you know Lion King. Yeah. Time, movie time so for uh, sure did you have popcorn for any other performances i actually didn't I, oh wow first, i, I yeah. take it as a compliment yeah 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 so, so tell me <laughs> oh is it a stop show now darling yeah. <laughs> well here we go yeah. daniel corin is anything happening to you what happened to you today anything unique Tell us one thing and then we'll well, leave. This is, unique. this is unique. I, I have I no have idea no what's idea. going on and it's unique to me. And uh, it's a beautiful, and it's a beautiful um, project, you know? Instead of me just laying around, looking at like Lion King 2, I don't know if that's <laughs> even a real movie. I'm actually performing, you know, uh, helping the arts, the New York City arts. <laughs> Uh, and so that's cool, and I'm grateful. How? What, what about your day? No, you're not gonna turn the tables on me, sir. Not oh, not today. Okay. Okay, sorry. Thank you, Daniel Corin. Thank you very much. Enjoy. What a pleasure! What a pleasure! Yeah. And for our last act of the evening, I'm taking out my air microphone to introduce the one, the only. The La Mama alum, the La Mama star, the world wider star sooner or later. Oh, wow. Yeah, I was saying it right. Star Busby. <laughs> that was that was too that was too corny, but that's okay. Off to you. <laughs> Thanks, Maddie. Hello, everyone. Hi. Uh, welcome to our lives. Uh, so, I wrote this song not too long ago, um, 
But I realized that it's for right now. So um, it's called Wishing Tree. It'll be on an EP that I'll release sometime soon as all things are on hold. Mm. But we'll see. I think it's for good reason. So here we go. Wishing tree, sing to me a new future ringing over. Oh, 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 oh. to give up only way to get it is to give up long time coming round to me freedom call freedom won there will always be more Thank you. My bad, my microphone is muted. Don't worry, everybody. I was just squealing saying, oh my God, we did it. And thank you, Starbuzzby. 
Holy crap. <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't, I, hear, I can't hear Star anymore. I'll be real. No are, 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 is she talking? Right All right, well, I was hearing that's before, our show, I yo. Anywho, <laughs> I hope everyone enjoyed that yeah. song. That's our show. Thank you to all of our performers. We got through it. Today was a beast of a day, and uh, I am just uh, blown away that we uh pulled it off tonight. I was really, truly thought that my feed just wouldn't come through it all afternoon. It was just being, and we couldn't figure it out, but Hey, we pulled it through a little bit. So thank you to our performers, Rena Anakwe, Susanna Cook, Chris Ignacio, Kimberly Saverino, John Kelly, Object Collection, Daniel Corin, Star Busby, and Video Art by Cameron Neal. We didn't have the sound on that first one, but we will have more by him soon because he's our resident artist and he's going to be doing something soon. You'll see. And our killer team, uh, the whole family at La Mama and uh, the Culture Hub crew. Um, and we had a little, we'll have a little music by John King too. So thank you everyone. This, sh this show is powered by La Live Lab, which is a software we're developing uh, by Olivia Jack and Tong Wu. It's amazing. That's it. Thank you. Good night.